Hi, I'm Alan Hawes. Welcome back to Wicked Wi-Fi 101. Last time we talked in detail about the HTTP protocol, particularly version 1.1. Now I'm going to show you how to use HTTP inside of a Wicked IoT device. First, remember that HTTP is just a simple ASCII text-based protocol. You send a client start line, optional headers, then a body, and the server responds back to you with a message that has a response start line, headers, and an optional body. This sounds like, I don't know, kind of a bit of a pain, but fortunately, Wicked provides you APIs to build the client request start line, the headers, and the content. It also provides you with functions to parse the output that comes back to you in the form of a server response, so you can find all of the information that you're looking for. The Wicked SDK has several built-in HTTP libraries for both HTTP 2.0 and HTTP 1.1. In this video, I'm only going to talk about the library that's in protocols slash HTTP client, which provides support for HTTP 1.1 clients. The process flow to make the HTTP client library work is, number one, initialize the HTTP client. Number two, optionally initialize the client identity if you're using TLS. Number three, optionally configure the TLS properties. Number four, optionally initialize the HTTP root cert. Number five, make a connection to the HTTP server. Number six, initialize an HTTP request. Number seven, initialize an array of HTTP headers. Number eight, write the headers. Number nine, write the inline. And number 10, optionally write the content body. And then finally, flush the writes. Once you do all of that, the request is sent. So you just wait for the callback function that you had registered when you initialize the client. In the callback, you get an event code such as HTTP connected, HTTP disconnected, or HTTP data received, and the actual response data. The data comes in the format of a structure that looks just like this. As you can see, the structure separates out the header and the payload. The library provides a function called HTTP parse header which will search through the headers and return the value for the header that you specify. You are responsible for parsing what you need from the payload. But again, the Wicked libraries can help. Remember, we talked a lot about the JSON parser in Chapter 4. That library will come in handy since most of the IoT devices in the world use JSON formatting for their messages. The last item in the structure is the remaining length. This is included because very long responses may not fit into a single message. In that case, the remaining length will be a number larger than zero. The callback function will get called again when the next set of data is available. This will happen over and over again until the remaining length is zero. In most IoT devices, I expect the messages to be short, so you will probably never have to deal with a message that is split over multiple transactions. But the functionality needs to be there if you need it for long responses. All this data is freed by calling the HTTP request DNIT. Typically, you'll call the function from the HTTP callback for the event, HTTP data received, when the value of the remaining length in the response structure is equal to zero. There is also a function called HTTP client DNIT that you should call after the server disconnects or after you decide to disconnect by calling the HTTP client disconnect function. The DNIT function must not be called inside of the HTTP callback because you would be removing a thread that's currently running. Therefore, in the HTTP callback, when you get the HTTP disconnected event, you should set a flag and then call the HTTP client DNIT 
from a different thread, like say the application start thread, when that flag gets set. Or often I just use a semaphore for that function. That's all there is to it. Just to illustrate, let me walk you through a couple of completed exercises that use HTTP. First, I'll show you a project that connects to a server at httpbin.org. The site httpbin.org is meant to be used by developers to test their HTTP verbs like get and post. That site has a resource called slash HTML that will return you, you guessed it, an HTML document. And another one called slash anything that will just echo back anything that is passed to it as content body. You can go there from a web browser first to see what it looks like. In fact, let me do that for you now. In my browser, I type httpbin.org slash HTML and hit enter. Here, you can see when I did that, my browser returns the first bit of Moby Dick as an HTML document. Did you guys read Moby Dick? I didn't in high school like I should have. And then when I got older, I tried over and over again for several years until I finally made my way through it. It was totally worth it as the book is amazing. All right, all right, let's get on to HTTP. Now let's go to httpbin.org slash anything. This resource is set up to just echo back what it got so you can see that my browser sent an HTTP get method with all these various headers. Here's the required host header and look, no data. Now let's open the Wicked Studio project that will connect to httpbin.org and it will issue a get method on the slash HTML and we'll use the slash anything resource. We will just print out what each one returns to the terminal window so you can get some practice trying this out. First off, in the make file, you'll see that I included protocols slash HTTP client library. And at the top of the C file, I included HTTP client.h. I then set up a macro for the server host, which is HTTP bin.org and the port, which is the standard port of 80. Next, I declare two structures. One will hold the client information and one will hold the request information. These will be initialized later in my project. In application start, I declare a header structure. I will only have one header, the required host header. So I'll make an array of one header field. Now I will enter the header information into the structure. The entry for the field is HTTP header host, which is just a macro that inserts host colon. Next is the length of the field, then the value to set, which is server host, which just inserts HTTP bin.org. Then finally, the length of the value. All of this will result in a header of host colon HTTP bin.org which is exactly what I need to send. Next, I initialize the wicked and create a semaphore, connect to my Wi-Fi network, and look up the IP address of httpbin.org. Then I initialize the HTTP client by passing it the empty client structure and telling it the name of my callback handler function. In this case, it's called event handler, which we'll see in a minute. Now I connect to the server from our HTTP client. I tell it the IP address to connect to, the port, and to use the non-secure version of HTTP. The connect timeout is set to three seconds. It needs to be long enough for the server to respond, and unless you're dialing up on a 300 baud modem from the 1980s, that should be plenty of time. Then I do a sequence of calls to initialize the request write the header, write the end header, and flush the request. At this point, our get request is sent to the server. We just need to wait for the callback function, so I wait for the semaphore that I set up earlier. Jumping down to the event handler, you can see that for the HTTP data receive state, I pull the header out, I print it to the UART, and then I do the same thing for the payload. 
If the remaining length is zero, then I know the response is done, so I DNET the request, remember, to free up the memory, and I set the semaphore. If it isn't zero, I don't set the semaphore because I know there's more data to come, and the callback will just be called again. Jumping back to the main program, once the semaphore has been set, I know the previous response is done, so I can start another new request. Just to be safe, I make sure that I'm still connected. Remember, the host can disconnect at any time it wants to. If I'm not connected, I will try to reconnect before moving on. Then I set up a new GET request, this time to slash anything instead of slash HTML that I used before. And don't forget to flush it. Once again, I wait for the callback by getting the semaphore. The callback goes through the same process, then deinits the request and sets the semaphore. After that, I disconnect and deinit from the server to clean things up before exiting. One last thing. Notice in the callback function that I called HTTP client disconnect. When I get an HTTP disconnected event, remember that the host can disconnect anytime it wants. When it does, I'll get the callback event. I disconnect on my side so that the two ends stay synchronized. If I didn't do that, when I tried to reconnect, it wouldn't work because the client on my end would think that it's already connected. That's not too bad, right? Now, let's run the program and see what happens. Okay, the HTTP GET to slash HTML returned a lot of data, so it came back in three chunks. We get the response header, then three separate response payloads. See how the callback didn't print until the in response message, until after the last chunk? That's because it saw the remaining length wasn't zero until the third chunk was delivered. After that, we get to echo back everything from HTTP GET to slash anything. This says we sent a GET method with a host header and a connection header. The second one was added by your library. At this point, adults use secure connections. So let's do the same thing now, except we'll use a secure TLS connection. First off, I'll change the port from 80 to 443, since HTTPS runs on port 443. Next, I'll declare a client configuration structure that will be used later. All of the initialization and Wi-Fi network connection is the same. Once the device is connected to Wi-Fi, I'll read the root certificate for httpbin.org from the DCT. I got the certificate by going to https httpbin.org with a web browser, viewing the root certificate, and downloading it. If you don't remember how to do this, or you want a refresher about certificates, take a look at Chapter 6b. Next, I need to set up the client configuration structure to define a max TLS fragment. Then I initialize the client and call the function to configure it. Notice that I still use null as the last argument to the client initialization function. That argument would be used if the other side of the connection wanted a certificate from my device to verify my identity. That website doesn't do it, so I don't need to supply my own certificate. That is, my device verifies who they are, but they don't verify who I am. That makes sense in this case, because the HTTP bin website will allow anyone to connect to it. Later on, when we talk about connecting to the cloud provider Amazon Web Services, the connection will need to be verified by both sides. The final change is to connect the client to the host using HTTP use TLS instead of HTTP no security. That tells the library function to open up a secure TLS socket to the web server. Everything else, building the request, sending it, receiving data back from the server, is exactly the same. It's not hard to use secure HTTP, and this is something that you absolutely should do. If you don't do it, you may find your IoT devices hijacked by somebody bad. So please, please use secure sockets. Now, when I run the project, 
you will see that instead of connecting to httpbin.org on just HTTP, it will connect to HTTPS, httpbin.org. But otherwise, I'll get the same data back. In this case, I'm sure the site that I connected to is really who they claim to be, and the data was sent encrypted so nobody could see it during the transmission. Remember, the purpose of the certificates is to ensure your data is encrypted and there's no man in the middle. Once again, go back to chapter six and listen to my security talk. That's all there is to using the Wicked HTTP client library in Wicked. The manual and solution projects have lots of other examples that do HTTP post, use web APIs, and other cool things, so you should check them out. You can post your comments and questions in our Wi-Fi developers community, or as always, you're welcome to email me a personal comment or question to alan underscore hawes at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert. Thank you again.